welcome, welcome. If this is your first time or your 50th time on the channel, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for checking out our channel. We really appreciate the support. If you like the video, smash that like button. If you don't like the video, definitely, definitely double smash that like button, all right? So without further ado, I'm sure most of you have figured out what we're actually going to be talking about today. And what we're going to be talking about is the canine unit. This is an amazing section of the department. And each and every single one of the, the members, the canine handlers, the dogs, their skill set, it's amazing. I just hope to be able to shed a little bit of light and show you a different side of the department. So without further ado, let's get into this. All right, ladies and gents, just hooked up with Sergeant Don Combs. He's gonna run us through some of the stuff that they do here with the canine section. So this magnificent specimen is Luke. Uh, he was imported from Germany. He was born in Czechoslovakia. Uh, and I got him when he was about uh, three. He's now seven and a half. Would you say that it's your best partner you've ever had? Uh, I've had some good partners. Uh, Luke's a great partner. Uh, in particular, he never complains about when we stop, where we go, what we do. Uh, just as long as we do something, that's his only requirement. No back talk, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know it. He does a lot of talking, but no back talk. <laughs> All right, so the sergeant is gonna actually show us where the dog stays. That's one of the questions that we wanna know is, where does this dog stay or what does it do through the eight hour shift? Uh, it's, it's basically a patrol car that's been fitted with this uh, crate in the back. Uh, the things that we wanted, uh, there's three access points for the crate. You can get out between the front seats. Uh, we can breach the back window and open, uh, loosen a lug nut or a wing nut, and then we can uh, use the other door if necessary in the event of a crash. There's also a temperature sensor that runs this fan. Uh, in the event the car gets too warm, it automatically rolls down the windows and uh, turns that fan on to ensure that uh, he's safe while he's in there. So he's got pretty happy living quarters. It's, uh, you know, I'm sure he'd like something a little better, but uh, it's spacious for him. He's a fairly large frame dog and it allows him some opportunity to move around, to lay down if need be. Uh, and so yeah, I think he's pretty happy. Anything he does that gets him out and about and at work is uh, pretty okay with him. How long have you been with the Toledo Police Department? I uh, started uh, December of 2002. And then when did you get introduced to the uh, canine section? Uh, I bid for the canine section, I think, in 2000, early 2013 is when they started the process of putting it together. It involved uh, a written test, uh, a physical fitness portion, and an interview. How many members are in the canine section? There's... 10 dogs that are uh, dual purpose dogs, so they do patrol work in addition to odor work. And then there are two other dogs that are single purpose dogs and they just do odor work. So there's 12 dogs total. How do you guys get the dog to do what the dog is supposed to do? Uh, well, they're real smart, so we just ask them. The real answer is we provide a stimulus, something that the dog gets really excited about. So in this case, it might be a toy like this could be a Kong ball, could be a tennis ball, uh, all sorts of things. So we provide a stimulus and then we give them a stressor. So some of the stuff we have back here, you know, we want them to jump over something or jump onto something. We start with something really small and we reward them. A lot of toy, a lot of play, a lot of excitement for the dog. And then we add a little more stress and then we reward them. And we just keep going through those cycles. And then suddenly a dog that was reluctant to jump over a, a, a parking bump jump over a fence or something like that that's only a foot or so high you can get them to go over a six seven and eight foot fence just to get that toy all right so we start with something like this small tube a lot of dogs i mean everybody would think geez what dog can't jump over that tube there's some dogs that won't he didn't have a problem with the tube like this oh. ah. 
then we transition to something like that and you saw if you notice he tried to get the toy from me this is what he does it for he does it because he wants this toy this toy represents fun for him so he's done this enough times he understands that that's the behavior i want out of him stuff like that doesn't bother him too much and he knows that if he does what we're looking for enough times he's going to get this reward and this is what he's after so we'll give it to him Where's your toy? Where's your toy? Is it okay for me to give your dog table scraps or treats? It's okay to feed your dog table scraps and it's okay to give your dog treats. I would love for you to be able to give my dog table scraps or treats, but the issue is because he's a working canine, I don't give him either of those because while we're working, the last thing I want when he's searching for dope or a person is him to get distracted by a wonderful treat or a nice thick juicy cut of meat uh, from somebody's plate. Uh, he's got to stay focused on the task at hand. When he retires and someday down the road that's happening, you can give him all the treats and all the table scraps you want. But until that day, I'm going to have to respectfully decline your wonderful offer. Well, what do you say, let's see what this pooch can find. All right, ladies and gents, what I have here is approximately one gram of heroin. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place this heroin today and we're gonna see if the dog can find it. So let's go. This call is a simulated search warrant. Uh, we've been told that the person who owns this house has narcotics inside the house. So we're gonna use the dog to try to locate those narcotics. Um, I could spend all day searching the house. He can usually search it in a couple minutes. The same area that I could cover. It would take me hours to do. He can do it much quicker. So we'll see if he can find it. Oh. To see out of him when he finds narcotics, you want to see him sit and stare at the source of odor. A pork. tells me that within that box where his nose is at is a source of odor. So because he's a good dog, I'm gonna reward him now with this toy, which is essentially just a simple piece of plastic pipe. Woo! Good boy! Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Good boy. Good boy. Uh, boy. Put my gloves on real quick. Right here in the side of this box, tucked down in some papers is that gram of heroin that uh, Sergeant Greenwald hit earlier. So a good find by the dog. All right, on to room number two.
think that's a pretty good indication there's dope uh, within that, what it looks like is a copier. So that's what I'm looking for from the dog. So with the idea of that high happy uh, for the dog, you, you change the pitch of your voice. Um, I, I noticed when uh, you were doing the searches and you would give the dog the toy, uh, you would change the pitch of your voice and the dog would really, really respond to that. Is that what you mean in regards to like high happy? That's that's actually, yes, that's exactly. Um, thank, hopefully I won't have to demonstrate it here in the car for you, but essentially you just you really ramp it up you try to get as excited as possible and for a lot of the stuff that you do with the dog the dog is used to a certain tone as you progress through stuff so when you bond that reward toy in there or you give them the reward toy and then you pair it uh, with a change in tone a change in voice and you really try to get it up uh, the dog seems to respond pretty well to that well, ladies and gents, that just about covers it. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.